Okay, so to do this last part, I've drawn a sketch of the diagram again. We're told that the particle is released from rest at B, and then it slides down the plane, and we've got to find out the speed as it passes through A. So to do something like this using the work energy principle, what I'm going to look at is the overall loss in energy. And I'm going to say that that loss in energy is going to equal the work done against the frictional force here. I'm going to create an equation where we can work out what V is. So first of all then, let's have a look at the different types of energy that are gained and lost. What we can see here is that from B down to A, it gains in kinetic energy. So let's just start with that, the gain in Ke. So the gain in kinetic energy, we know it's a half mv squared, so it's going to be a half multiplied by the mass 30 times v squared. In other words, 15 v squared. Well, we can't do much with that because we don't know what v is. But also, it loses gravitational potential energy as it goes from B to A. So if we look at the loss in gravitational potential energy, then we know that's MGH. And H we worked out from basic trigonometry from a triangle running through here would be 50 sine 20 degrees. So if we fill this in here, we've got M being 30, G being 9.8, and H being the 50 sine 20 degrees. And if you work that out, okay, we can work that out in the calculator, you end up with 5,027.6961, and so on. And that will be measured in joules. Okay, so now we know what our loss in energy is going to be. So therefore the loss in energy has got to be equal to the loss in gravitational potential energy which we saw was 5027.6961 and so on. And then we've got to subtract the gain in kinetic energy which is 15 V squared. Now the point is this loss in energy must be equivalent to the work done against the friction. So in other words, 1 quarter R times 50. Now this was something we worked out in the previous part, the work done by friction, the quarter R times 50. So if you're not sure about that, just turn back and you'll see that that came to 3,453.3703. So we now know that therefore 3,453.3703 and so on, okay, joules, as the work done by the friction here must equal this quantity. So we can just write that in as 5027.6961 and so on minus 15v squared. So we've got a simple equation here which we just need to rearrange. We've got the 15v squared then if we add it to both sides and if we subtract this value then 5027.6961 minus this value here gives us a total value of 1574.3258 and so on. Simply divide through by 15 and you got V squared equals 104.9550 and so on. Take the square root to both sides and you end up with V equaling 10.244 and so on. Give that to an appropriate degree of accuracy, say one decimal place or three signal figures, same thing in the end, 10.2, 10.2 meters per second, two, three significant figures. All right?